Anticoagulants, also known as blood thinners, are medications that are used to prevent blood clots from forming. In today's video, I am going to be explaining what blood thinners are, the different types, when they are used, how they are used, and your nursing responsibilities when you're taking care of a patient who is on anticoagulants. <music> Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're here for the first time, hi, my name is Imola Ayobusari and I make content about nursing and healthcare. In today's video, I am going to be simplifying this class of medications known as anticoagulants. On my channel, just like I'll be doing in this video, I try to make my tutorials or my lectures very, very simple, broken down into pieces in a way that everybody can understand. Please, this is not a replacement for your lecturers or for your lectures in class. I just want to make it very simple so that when you go over this video, you get to understand the whole concept. And when you probably go back to read your text or go back to class, you understand what they are trying to teach you. Okay, so let's go. Just like I said in the beginning of the video, anticoagulants basically prevent blood clots from forming. They are also called blood thinners, but that doesn't mean that they make your blood thin like when you are trying to boil palm oil, okay? It's just that they slow down this process, this blood clotting process. You know that blood clotting process is known as hemostasis. That is how the body tries to like react to when there's like a cut or you break in any um, blood carrying vessel. Now there are different reasons why a patient would have to use or someone will have to be on anticoagulants and some of these reasons are uh, deep vein thrombosis which, which is when there are clots in the deep veins and this is usually in the legs when there is pulmonary embolism which is clots in the lungs stroke prevention this uh for example people who have atrial fibrillations and there could be blood clots in the heart causing this they usually are placed on blood thinners you can also use it to prevent heart attack for patients who are at risk of a heart attack as well as when a patient has been given an artificial heart valve. Now the heart has a number of valves that needs to open and close for blood to flow from one part of the heart to the other to another part or another section of the heart. Now there are situations where some of these valves either become weakened or destroyed and patients now have to go on the, undergo surgeries or procedures where the heart valve is replaced with an artificial valve. Now to stop blood clots from forming around that mechanical valve, a patient may also be placed on anticoagulant. So these are some of the many reasons where a patient or a person will have to be using anticoagulant. I'm going to be discussing four different types of anticoagulants or blood thinners in this video. I'm also going to be talking about the different types or examples of medications that fall under these types or class of anticoagulants and how they work. The first type of anticoagulants that I'm going to be talking about are heparins. Heparins help to stop um, some proteins that are needed for the blood clot formation process like thrombin and factor XA. A very common example of heparin is this injection known as enoxaparin. Next thing is vitamin K antagonist. Now, what they do is that they block vitamin K, which is one of the important things that are needed for blood clots to form. So this makes the blood clotting process very, very slow. It actually takes a few days to work and you also need to be doing frequent blood tests to monitor the effect of this vitamin K antagonist. And a very popular example of that is warfarin. Next are direct oral anticoagulants, known as DOACs. And how they work is that they block the factor XA or thrombin, similar to what heparin draws, and they stop or slow down the blood clot, from, uh, blood clot formation process. They actually work very quickly, and unlike um, the warfarin, which are the vitamin K antagonists, they don't need regular blood tests. Example of that is rivaroxaban and apixaban, as well as dabigatran. These medications, a very simple way that I remember this class is XABAN, Xaban. So because two medications in this class have their last few letters to be that. So whenever I see apixaban, rivaroxaban, adoxaban, I remember that these are direct oral anticoagulants. Just before I move on, if you're enjoying this video, 
first give it a thumbs up so that youtube knows that this video is valuable and push it out to other nursing students that might need the video secondly if you're a nursing student and you're looking for a free place a very free place to listen to audio tutorials get quizzes as well as you know get study plans that would help you to plan towards your council exams like your final nursing exams you can check out my website i'll leave all the links to that in the description box below there are so many things resourceful materials that you will find on there that would be very very useful to you so let's go finally we have antiplatelet drugs and antiplatelet drugs stop the platelets from sticking together and this prevents the first step of the blood clot formation process. A very common example of this is clopidogrel and aspirin. But I know that you've heard aspirin under another class, especially on my channel. That is because aspirin has a lot of functions. So you can find aspirin fitting into different classification of drugs. But aspirin can still be considered as an antiplatelet drug. So now that we understand what blood thinners are and the various types of blood thinners and a very simple explanation of how they work, what are your responsibilities as you know if you're taking care of a patient that that is on anticoagulants. The first thing is to ensure that they don't fall or to avoid any form of injury at all. Remember, hemostasis is how the body tries to protect itself from losing blood when there's an injury or you know when there's like a break in skin integrity so now that you're on medications that is actually slowing down this normal physiology of the body you need to ensure that you don't get injured because the medication is already in your system if you get injured you would bleed for a very long time and that can be very very detrimental so you try to ensure that your patient who is um taking anticoagulants does not have sharp um objects around them if they are not steady on their feet you try to accompany them or give them like devices like um zima stream or something that they can use to move around to prevent them from falling or you know getting any form of injury at all another thing is to always watch out for signs of bleeding so that you can combat it as soon as possible signs of bleeding like bruising blood in the urine blood from their gum like surrounding their teeth or anything anything around the skin that is unusual watch out for those things next thing is to always ensure that they have their blood test done especially for patients who are on warfarin i earlier mentioned that um regular blood test is required for warfarin because Patients who are on warfarin, they need to monitor the effects of the drug on their blood. Another thing is to always ensure that you are aware of other medications that the patient is taking. And this is because of something we call drug-to-drug -drug interaction. There are some medications that may interfere with the effects of the blood thinners. All the blood thinners would even interfere with their actions, such as some painkillers, like ibuprofen, that may end up increasing their risk of bleeding. Another thing is to encourage them to limit their intake of alcohol because drinking alcohol can increase the risk of bleeding, especially if the patient is on warfarin. If you want to see more of my pharmacology videos, click on this playlist here and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.